हमारे नए वीडियोस को देखने के लिए YouTube के ऐप पर बेल आइकन को क्लिक कीजिए What's up guys, iOS 11 Developer Beta 2 is here and with it's over a hundred new features and changes. So I'd like to walk through all of those with you in this video and I apologize for releasing this a bit late. I was away on a vacation getaway, so I hope you guys understand. The landscape lock screen for some reason has been disabled in iOS 11 Beta 2, so that's no more. The date on the calendar icon is now bolder. I'm not sure if this is intentional, but when you 3D touch icons now, it's more of a hold and press at the same time. It's not instant like it used to be. I'm hoping this is a bug. On the left in beta 2, the search bar and spotlight is now more visible, the icons inside, and it's slightly, slightly wider now. The app switcher now has a slightly wider portion on the right where you can click to go back to the home screen. Previously, there was almost none. And sadly, our friend, the volume HUD is back. Might be a glitch, might be here to stay. When using the 3D touch trackpad, you can actually feel a different haptic feedback now in this new beta. It's more distinct and it actually has a little tiny sound now. And this applies to the toggles and switches and settings as well. Here's that new toggle noise, listen carefully. Sounds very interesting. There's a new two finger tap one in the UI table view, for example, in notes. With two fingers, just go ahead and tap and you can quickly select on things just like that. When inside of the app and trying to access the cover sheets, now when you slide down, you can see there's a new animation. It starts out blurred and becomes less blurred when it reaches the bottom. On the cover sheet, you can now clear all earlier notifications by using the same 3D touch uh, gesture just like that. It wasn't previously working. The animation when entering the cover sheet and you have the music player going on in the background is slightly different now. It's kind of cool, I really like that. The actual music player receives a couple aesthetic upgrades, the bottom scrubber is more distinct now, and the play pause buttons are a little more grayed out. So there's also this cool little feature up here for your AirPlay devices. It's a very nice dark interface throughout iOS, works very well, I like that. And jumping into the control center, you'll notice that the music widget, when it's idle, it now displays iPhone music. And go ahead and 3D touch on it, and you'll get a new little icon right here when nothing is playing, when it says just iPhone music. You can also access AirPlay devices here, even though you're not playing anything. When in a landscape app and you want to access Control Center, notice a little slider right here. It's a little bit fatter than it was in iOS 10 and Apple didn't even have it in the last beta. Screenshots can now be held to get the share sheet. Instead of having to go into photos every single time, you can get it real quick here. Playing music and going to record your screen will no longer stop the music. You can still hear it while your device's screen is being recorded. Found by an iOS beta user, the Safari View controller has a new interface, so it doesn't confuse you that you can actually go into the URL, basically blanks that out. Smaller devices than the plus sizes now get the benefit of tabs in Safari, so you can actually see which tabs are which. In Safari, hold on the new tab button and you get a new option for new private tab. In Safari settings, if you scroll all the way down and go into advanced, there is a new experimental features tab where you can try unreleased features here. Now on iPad, you can actually disable the recents feature in the dock if you don't like those hanging around there. It's now found in the multitasking tab and show recents disabled there so you get a cleaner looking dock now. And when dragging an app to an area it won't go to anymore, it'll actually show up in the area it's bouncing back to before it reaches it. You can no longer move multiple apps at once on iPad, but this feature is replaced by another where you can tap on another app and open one side by side using this little shortcut here instead of having to use the dock every single time and it gets even better say you want to open another app in split screen view with another take it and drag it onto another one in the dock and it will go ahead and open it and then you can pop it onto the side if it's compatible on ipad you can now close multiple apps in the app switcher in lightning speed just tap in the same spots and they'll close super fast with an external keyboard you can now hold command option d to bring up dock and hide it and in the control center when you hold an icon to bring up the toggle for it it doesn't pop up in the middle of the display like it used to it now pops up conveniently right next to your hand in the accessibility settings the assistive touch can now be adjusted for the opacity so if you do have that enabled and you want to make it less visible you can do so here so there it is let's go all the way down to make it near invisible and just like that it's very very difficult to see added to keyboard settings is the option to change the one-handed keyboard settings in here as well so not only can you do it on the keyboard but also within the keyboard settings the wallet app will now detect when a pass is receiving too many updates and will disable it to preserve battery life in the photo application notice the top right button details has been replaced with the edit button so this is pre ios 7 era orientation now in the photos application you'll now get a new splash screen when looking at live photos letting you know that you can explore them further 
further. A Reddit user posted this comparison showing us that long exposure editing for photos is now much higher quality and it really is. In the photos application, you can actually select a photo, hold it, and then add more to the queue and drag and drop them to any other area within the photos application. In the photo settings, you'll notice there's a new option, optimize iPhone storage by uploading full quality photos and keeping the low resolution default thus saving storage. In iPhone storage settings, the recommendations can now be expanded to see even more and contract it with that button. In the mail settings, there is a new option to complete threads. Not entirely sure what it does though. In accessibility settings, you can see that Apple does now support MFI hearing aids. I personally noticed that Apple did rework the search results in settings. Look at how complicated and complex they were before. Now you just get a handful of options so you can find what you're looking for a little bit easier maybe. In the voiceover settings of accessibility, you can see that Apple did add a little description right below the setting. Also in accessibility, the accessibility shortcut, you can see that these options can actually be reorganized now with a slightly different interface. I also noticed that capacity wise, iOS 11 beta 2 takes up 10 more megabytes versus beta 1. In the restrictions, you'll notice Apple did add an extra tab for password settings. In the iTunes and App Store settings, below your email address, you'll notice Apple added a new tab, password settings. In here, you can change whether you want a passcode to be required for a password or when exactly. Lots of updates to the control center. So starting with the icons themselves, when the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is completely killed, you'll notice it has a little interface change there with a crossed out marker. Now, it also can activate Bluetooth from an off position. When Bluetooth is off on iOS 11 beta one, it does not activate. And if you look closely, the personal hotspot icon is now grayed out, whereas before when inactive, it was slightly colored. A really neat change here. When you activate airplane mode, it will no longer disconnect you from Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Thank goodness. And an interesting behavior change in iOS 11 altogether, when you actually disable Wi-Fi or Bluetooth from the control center, it doesn't turn it off. It just disconnects from the current connection. Also, I was unable to get any sort of home icon now on iOS 11 beta 2, even with everything set up. I'm not able to get this working. And in general, the performance of 3D touch in the control center has been improved. It's now much smoother, something I definitely noticed right away. Now, when you activate the low power mode control center toggle in beta 2 it no longer glows yellow and the same thing applies to the flashlight icon which is a change I don't like. Now inside of the flashlight icon you'll notice that there's a little toggle up top now and the switch on that thing actually goes up and down when you activate it. Super neat. And you'll notice that the 3D touch widget for the clock icon is slightly changed. And now it no longer has a zero second default. It starts at one minute as that bottom portion is grayed out. So I don't really know why you even need a zero second timer. In the actual clock app, you'll notice the bedtime splash screen has been moved up a little bit. It's a bit clearer easier to read, and the bottom toggles are now a lot bolder on beta 2. The world clock looks worse, I'd say, but overall a good change here. In the control center settings, you'll notice the custom controls have their own little tab now. So inside, you'll find the same interface, and you can also get a new setting here, access within apps. So you can disable control center within apps. When using Snapchat and recording a video, the audio continues to play through the source. So it doesn't start going out of your iPhone right away, which is really neat. Inside of Wi-Fi settings for an individual network, you'll find a new setting auto join, which by default will join you with that network. And when you actually disable that feature, you'll notice you get a little prompt on another Wi-Fi uh, signal over here saying auto join disabled. There's a new animation for opening up apps from the control center. So let's say the app camera is on the page I'm sitting on. When I open it here from the control center, you'll notice it goes to the home screen and then it opens from the home screen. But if I'm on another page and I open the same app, you'll notice that it slides in from the right. Now when calling someone using a Bluetooth device, Apple has added new little icons for individual Bluetooth types. So some people with certain Beats products have different icons, it's really neat. Now Apple Music has a new sort of social media in the Apple Music where you can find and follow friends. And when you do wanna follow someone, you'll get a request like this as a notification. You can also hide albums or tracks you're listening to that you don't want other people to know you're listening to with this hide from profile option. Now search in Apple Music has got a lot more diverse. As you can see, it will show you many different options here when you search for something. The music app in general has been reworked, so the main icons are a little bit smaller, not so in your face. And when you actually go in the top charts now, you'll see that it does display these songs here, whatever subject you're looking at in a very big manner. In the podcast app settings, there is now a section where you can adjust your privacy settings here. The search function for previously purchased apps is now back in the app store. And there's a new category when searching that'll show you developers 
when you actually search for a certain app. So from Google, you can see there's a new developer tab here. And the App Store search bar has been reworked. It's a little bit tidier now. When downloading never previously downloaded apps, Apple just added a prompt very similar to the Touch ID one for whatever reason, making things more complicated. Now, when using a smart battery case with your device on iOS 11, previously it was just called case in the battery widget. Now it's called Apple Accessory, or some people have seen Smart Battery Case. You can now copy and paste text from a notification on the lock screen. How cool is that? You can actually drag and drop from the Files widget now in this latest beta to your Messages app or any other place uh, where applicable. Super cool. I noticed during the setup menu, there's a slightly tweaked Siri interface for setting her up. Inside of Siri and Search Settings, the Press for Siri option has migrated here from the Accessibility Settings. Also in Siri Settings, the Siri suggestions have slightly been reworked. It looks a little bit cleaner now. Siri now shows the updated calculator icon and notice this, by default, Siri closes if you don't talk to her in like three to five seconds now in beta two. In the emergency SOS tab, you'll notice that the descriptions have been updated, made slightly longer and more descriptive. Inside of location services, you'll notice the frequent locations tab has been renamed to significant locations. Other than that, no new features. Also reported by a Reddit user, lane guidance is now working in this new beta of iOS 11, which is super neat. Apple has included a new augmented reality flyover feature in the maps of iOS 11. So for some of the bigger cities, you'll see this. Basically, you can explore the city with augmented reality using your gyroscope. So you can move through it and get this really cool 3D view just by moving your phone or iPad. It's quite neat. Also, the new indoor floor plan map feature that Apple was showing at the keynote is now active. So you'll see this little button here for the levels and you can go ahead, explore level level by level for bigger stuff like airports or malls. Not all, but more will be updated with time. And the Do Not Disturb feature, which Apple also showcased, is now active inside of the control center. You will not be disturbed as long as this mode is on and you're driving. Also, the only way to exit out of it on the lock screen is 3D touch on this and say, I'm not driving. And as a result of this new feature in settings in the Do Not Disturb tab, you'll see some new options here for the Do Not Disturb mode while driving. So you can choose to whitelist certain people here and activate it manually or automatically when you connect to Bluetooth. Also, when using Siri in Do Not Disturb mode while driving, she will not use any text on screen, so that way you're not distracted. In the map settings, you now get an option to disable the show parked location when you disconnect from a car via Bluetooth over here. Music from Spotify will now show album art on the music player in iOS 11 beta 2. CarPlay received some interface tweaks as well. The actual signal bar now matches iOS 11 with bars instead of dots, and if you actually tap on this time or bar area over here, it will take a screenshot of your car play. And turn by turn now shows you the next turn up here where in the last beta it didn't really work. In iCloud Drive settings, you can now invite family members via iMessage where previously it had to be by two-factor authentication. In Messages, the new effect known as Echo has now changed colors to orange. And whoa, that's a little bit crazy there. So whatever it is you're texting, if it's a picture or an image, it'll reverse it. And if I jump into the same one here, you'll notice it's all orange now, which is interesting. And now iMessage syncing via iCloud is sort of working as beta, but it's not fully there yet. On the left with beta 2, you'll notice there's a little dividing bar in the app store inside of iMessage, where over here it's not as clean looking. During FaceTime calls on the top little live icon over there, you'll be able to reverse the camera with that new little button right there. Inside of the files application, third-party support has been added, so you can use Google Drive, among other third-party file apps. Apps. Inside of the quick share settings for any file, you're now able to upload to files. This replaces save to iCloud. iOS 11 beta 2 fixes the issue with YouTube where you couldn't access the search bar. Now it's working. The feedback app in iOS 11 beta 2 actually works now for iOS 11. Dictation now works for a new language, Hindi. In settings, the TV provider interface has been tweaked, a little bit cleaner looking, and a default search bar. The cellular data interface has been slightly tweaked. Now, instead of having call time up top, it's displayed on the bottom. Now, when you drag an app in wiggle mode to a place where it's not supposed to be, it has a new interface now. Notice that kind of dissolves where uh, over here it just pops back into place. So 
Might be a bug, might be a feature. In the news app, the following tab, notice that the search bar sticks with you now instead of having to go all the way to the top for it. Same in the search over here. And there's a slightly new interface over here for the saved. As you can see, a little bit of change there. The bottom icons are now bolder on the left. So little updates there. Slightly tweaked interface when connecting an Apple Watch via the W1 interface here. You can immediately continue to set it up, not just click pair. Now, when you get a notification in beta two, it's a little bit easier to handle it. You can 3D touch on it and slide to dismiss right away instead of having to do it in two separate actions. So 3D touch and slide to dismiss. Cool. And just a couple of fixes. Some of you will appreciate Apple fixed the brightness issue where it wouldn't stay where you set it. And playing back video within Safari now actually works. So guys, just want to say there it is iOS 11 beta 2. What a fantastic second beta chock full of features. Can't wait for the third. Stay tuned guys. And uh, just so you guys know, this one is actually pretty decently fast. Uh, as for Geekbench, they are pretty close here, but I got to say crash wise, I've been experiencing much more glitches on beta 2. Don't know why that is, especially on iPad. So take precaution when updating. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.